Welcome to Jesus Manuel Menegarza Photography Video and Audio. In this edition, I'm going to be talking about uh, the subjects a lot of photographers, specifically documentary photographers, pick. First of all, let me talk about uh, the subjects I, over my uh, last uh, 50 years of my career, have picked to photograph. Typically, I photograph people that I respect people that I find uh, interesting, people in the arts community, politicians, academics, again, people that I respect. What subjects did I decide not to photograph, which a lot of other people decided to photograph? Primarily criminals, <laughs> if I was to be very succinct, criminals. They're are a lot of criminals in the old neighborhood uh, that I've uh, encountered, dealt with, met, and um, they wanted to be photographed. You know, they posed, you know, they, they would uh, do their little routine and uh, ask, essentially, oh, you should photograph me, I'm a, I'm a very in interesting person. But I decided not to photograph them. Again, these are people that are involved in gangs, people involved in criminal activity uh, that I did not want to put on a pedestal. So some, photogra uh, some photographers out there put people on pedestals uh, by photographing a person, putting them in an exhibit, put them in a magazine, you uh, immortalize them and you put them on a pedestal. I understood my role in the old uh, photographic community. If I decided to photograph that individual uh, and put him in an exhibit, people go, oh, wow, that's cool. That guy's cool. Of course, the underlying message of this cool person is, hey, he's a gangster. He's a killer. He's a drug dealer. He uh, has very low respect in the community that I am uh, you know, a member of. So, a lot of people travel around the world, they photograph people in these, you know, these uh, communities that are gang members. They have them posing with guns. They have them showing off their tattoos, uh, their interesting haircuts, their outfits. Similar uh, situation occurs in my old neighborhood, you know, certain people dressed a certain way to identify as a gang member. That's, uh, it's, it was, uh, it's a continuation of how they dressed in prison. Uh, they dressed a certain way in prison. Uh, once they came out, they dressed similarly. Uh, a lot of the fashions of gang members are derived from their experience in prison. So you can quickly and readily understand who this person is and what they're trying to represent. So, again, uh, as a photographer, as a documentary photographer, we make certain decisions. Uh, we decide if we're going to uh, photograph that individual, uh, again, uh, immortalize them, and uh, you know, produce an image and maybe even sell it uh, to certain clientele that said, "Hey, this is this is cool," uh, et cetera, et cetera. There are photographers that make a living doing this type of street photography. They go to Colombia, they go to the, the worst parts of Mexico or uh, Europe and stuff like that, and they shoot gangs in the United States and stuff like that all over, you know, they, that's their, you know, that's how they operate and that's how they make a buck and that's what they shoot, they exhibit. They go, hey, this is cool. This person looks, he's on the margins, she's on the margins, this teenager's on the margins and they uh, are violent. They're crazy. They look crazy. Uh, I understand. Back in the 60s, we had Diane Arbus who photographed what he called uh, uh, certain types of individuals uh, on the margins, but these are regular folks. They were not killers. They were not murderers. <laughs> they were just strange, okay? But a lot of these people now that are doing documentary photography go out, you know, in search of these individuals, and they go, I'm going to shoot gang members in Cali, Colombia, and I'm going to pose them against a wall, against graffiti. They're going to have the unusual haircut. They're going to have the tattoos. They're going to have the clothes that are uh, identify them as gang members, as thugs. And a lot of these individuals that are, want to be photographed understand that their life is short, precarious at best, because they're involved <clears throat> in illicit activity 
uh, they may, they're 18, maybe not make it to 19 or 20. Uh, you know, they understand that. So, they, hey, let, I'm, I'm, I want to be photographed. I'm a, I'm a gangster. I'm cool. I, I'm James Cagney. <laughs> a lot of Chicanos that I grew up with that were in uh, gangs that I knew back in Silicon Valley when it was called the Garden City, San Jose, California. Thought they were cool, like like I said earlier, James Cagney. They, they wanted that sort of aura. They wanted that image. But they also understood that uh, they were, there's a very good chance they would be going to prison, a very good chance that they may be uh, offed, uh, killed by one of their uh, contemporaries that are uh, in a competing gang, the Norteños, Sureños, the Red, the Crips, the Bloods, the list goes on and on in California. So what do you think of my uh, decision not to photograph thugs, gangsters, murderers, <laughs> drug dealers? What do you think? Uh, was it a good decision? I decided to photograph certain communities that I felt were important and need to be elevated, need to be uh, illuminated. I didn't need to illuminate these people. I didn't feel it was important to me. I knew there was a market for it. There was a lot of people out there saying, why don't you photograph this community? I said, nah, that's all right. I'll, I'll pass on that. So, I appreciate you watching my uh, video. This is, again, my opinion. And these are my decisions growing up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Silicon Valley. And, you know, as I travel, you know, here and there, I, I encounter people that are don't have the best interests of you and I, you know, and I don't want to elevate them. Again, I do not want to elevate these people by photographing them. I'll ignore them. I see them, you know, you know they pose, you know, they're cool, and they think they're James Cagney again, but uh, or Al Pacino and Scarface, they, you know, they think they're cool, and uh, you know, I've been around these people. I remember once I went to a business and I was uh, talking to this person and I brought, you know, I was trying to sell them advertising, but eventually I figured out that they were, it was a front for a, a drug operation. And I walked out and I go, oh, I got this and I opened it up and it was full of cash. I said, hey, this is yours, not mine. <laughs> and they said, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, hope you're doing fantastic. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And share. I would greatly appreciate it. This is a rather modest channel. Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Photography, video, and audio. I would greatly appreciate it again if you subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification button so you can check out future videos. And uh, please leave your comments, your kind and friendly uh, comments, your professional comments below. Tell me what you think. Uh, hey, did I make the wrong mistake? Did I make the bad mistake, uh, wrong mistake, and say, you know, I should have photographed these people and made some money? made some cash. You know, people love the juxtaposition of their lifestyle, especially affluent people. And they can say, look at that poor slob with the tattoos, with the scars, with the gun. He's on the margins. He's a, he's pretty crazy. Or as they say in, the, in my community, ta loco el viejo, ta loco el vato. <laughs> Again, thanks for checking out my channel. This has been Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Gracias. Adiós. Bye-bye.